how to decide between border expansion and population growth. It's a common choice players need to make in Polytopia and crucial for planning not only giant production, but also improvement placement and long-term strategy. We'll show you the basics of borders versus pop growth, as well as some advanced tips for high level strategy. Welcome to the Poly Champions YouTube. Let's learn how to decide between border expansion and population growth. On the most basic level, to choose between border expansion and population growth, you look at the resources around a city and ask, how can I get more giants? If expanding borders will get you two giants and pop growth only gets you one, you go for borders. If expanding borders doesn't get you any more resources, don't bother. Just get that extra population. Here, the Omaji capital has grown through road connections. Expanding borders will only give one additional fish. Not helpful. However, if he takes pop growth, the capital city only needs two more population to get to that giant. In this Symanti example, the capital does not have enough resources, just those two forests, if you use population to get a centipede. So he chooses to get border expansion. And then with the one fruit and the one, two, three, four other forests, he's able to get a centipede later. Here, the pink Ketsali player has mathematics. He can place a sawmill and get a giant this turn with population, but he chooses to expand borders. This gets him not one giant, but two giants. This is an extreme example of a Symanti border growth resulting in not two, not three, not four, but five total centipedes. I think that's a record. Count in advance and do the math. Don't upgrade unless you have enough stars and resources for the giant. Here, Zabasi has three farms and can get a giant with population growth. But he only has 14 stars. He ends up being one star short. So be careful. Wait to invest in the city until you can afford those resources to upgrade all the way. Remember... Getting that first giant is key, not just for the giant, but for the Park of Fortune monument. Usually you want population growth in your capital for that first giant, so you can use the Park of Fortune right away. Going beyond the basics, map size matters. In a tiny game at close quarters, rushing a giant is often better, even if it gets you less giants. Let's hear Chris, a two-time bullet champion, explain. Looking at my setup, I have six population in my border growth, potentially eight if you include a sawmill. It's true that that is one more giant, but I have a four to three city advantage. Thus, an additional level for another giant is probably not necessary this game. And getting those giants up faster puts more pressure. I want to say, here's a giant. It's coming for your capital right now. You better deal with it. If I go border growth, I'm basically saying, oh, I'm going to get a giant. I'll get it eventually, though. You don't have to worry about it. So by getting population growth, I'm getting the giant this turn. I'm putting down the monument. I'm setting up for another giant. Whereas if I didn't go population growth and went border growth, I would be giving Gala a window of opportunity to set up a defense. Another intermediate tip. Consider potential monuments to get more population. This could mean going for all the lighthouses on a tiny map and getting the Explorer Monument. Or if you're playing IMO, it means finding the best spot to place that Altar of Peace and get you that fast giant. Or maybe you're just racking up 10 kills for the Gate of Power Monument. Keep in mind that you can use those monuments to bump up your population and grow your cities. Sometimes you need border expansion to get access to the water. The only way to place ports and create naval units may be by expanding borders first. Finally, border expansion can potentially get you higher tier 3 production buildings like sawmills, forges, and markets. In this example, Zabasi could have gotten a single giant on the coast city, but he expands borders to place a windmill in the new real estate, which gets him an extra giant. 
Here, Illyrian also chooses border expansion. She picks up a dragon egg with a farm and a couple of lumber huts, but it improves her sanctuary spot as well. In this example, Orange Luxador expands borders to get a level 6 forge spot. Another reason to go for more real estate is if you're using a turtling strategy to defend and hold one city while you wait on the sidelines and other players battle it out. In this situation, border expansion is key for getting more tiles to place those buildings and monuments. Now let's talk about some advanced tips for using border expansion and population growth. First, you can use border expansion offensively to deny your opponent something valuable like resources or access. Border expansion can steal terrain from a village that an opponent is about to claim, reducing the utility of that new city. Here, Pink Kiku can see that green is going to get that village. Pink expands borders, stealing some of the future city's resources and water access. Even neutral territory can be valuable. Here, Illyrian is being threatened by Hudrick. Hudrick has three knights waiting on roads. Illyrian places a sawmill, plants a forest, and places a lumber hut to expand borders, preventing Hudrick from placing roads and using those neutral tiles for movement. In this Zabasi game, yellow is attacking orange on roads placed on neutral territory. Orange expands borders, preventing yellow from using those roads for extra movement. It could also mean expanding borders to cut off naval connections between a capital and another city, reducing their income. Another advanced strategy tip for naval border expansion is getting more water territory to upgrade your rafts. You can position a raft, expand the borders, then upgrade the raft and attack. Let's look at two examples. In this game, Yellow Chinchi expands borders, upgrades the raft to a rammer, then moves it to attack and kill the opponent's scout. In the same game, his ally Aimo uses a monument to expand borders, upgrade a raft to a scout, and then use it to attack. There is also the cloak and dagger factor. Expanded borders give daggers more room to spawn so remember, daggers spawn within the target city's borders and preferentially pop up on tiles that give them a defense bonus. So a common strategy in the late game to deal with cities on the front lines with big border expansion is to simply cloak it. Expanding borders as Polaris gets you more ice. This can be great for ice bank or for more movement options. Here, Aquarium breaks some ice, taking away Polaris's path to attack. Polaris uses a monument and fish to upgrade and expand borders. This lays down fresh ice, allowing the sleds to attack, for a Mooney to move in and make more ice, and finally for a sled to kill the Trident and siege the Aquarian city. Here's one last advanced tip, and it's about using population growth. If you want to pull off a Houdini, that's the trick where you disappear a sieging unit by upgrading the city and getting your own giant, you need to choose population growth. That boost in population allows you to quickly grow your city and pop a giant. Choosing between population and borders is so common in Polytopia, and the decision is crucial for planning giant production, growing your economy, and your long-term tactics. So consider the resources around your cities, the map size, the tribe you're playing, and your overall strategy when making the choice. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It helps us a lot. For more tips on how to play Polytopia better, watch our Explorer vs. Workshop video. Join our Discord. Come play Polytopia with us. A link to the Discord server is in the description. Take care. See you on the next one.